Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Hey everyone, it's Sound Guy Barry. In this episode, we're going to talk about bridging amplifiers. And can any amplifier be bridged? Well, the quick answer to that is no. You can't bridge every single amplifier. However, you can bridge most stereo amplifiers. So we're going to break down what characteristics the amplifier has to have in order to be bridgeable. What exactly is happening when you push your, the bridge button or flip that switch? And how to bridge an amplifier that doesn't have a bridge switch? Well, I hope you like these kind of videos and this sort of content. And if you do, I would encourage you to take a quick second now and click the subscribe button so that you're informed of new videos when they come down so you don't miss anything good. If you like these presentations, I would also encourage you to hit the like button because my ego really appreciates that. And YouTube also appreciates it. And if you hit the like button, that tells YouTube that at least somebody out there likes this stuff and maybe YouTube will suggest these videos to more people. So let's get back on it. So when you bridge an amplifier, what you're doing is you're taking the two sides of that amplifier, the left channel and the right channel, and we're putting them together into one single mono amplifier. And by inverting the polarity, instead of going from zero baseline and swinging voltage up and down, which it's doing on both channels independently, we swap the polarity in one of the channels. So when we put the same signal into both sides of the amplifier, one side of the amplifier is going positive, while the other side of the amplifier is going negative. So instead of just going from zero and up and down, we're now going up and down, working against each other on the two sides of the amplifier, and we swing twice the voltage. And the way that Ohm's law works out, when we swing twice the voltage on that amplifier, it puts out four times the power. Now, this also makes the amplifier work really hard because it's putting out four times the power. And so most amplifiers can't really achieve those numbers. They'll put out more power than they do in stereo mode, but getting four times, that requires a pretty strong output stage. And most of the time, with most amplifiers, you hit some current limitations before you actually get to that point. And so that is a specification that you can look at to get a clue as to how strong of an amplifier you're dealing with. If the spec on the amplifier says that it can do 100 watts in stereo and 400 watts bridged, well, that's a pretty good clue that that's a strong, powerful amplifier. On the other hand, if it says it can do 100 watts in stereo and 200 watts bridged, yeah, that tells you that there's some current limitations in the output stage of that amplifier, and it's not quite as beefy as the first one that we just considered. Now, the first clue that an amplifier is bridgeable is the existence of a bridge switch. And if you see that, that's a pretty good clue, at least it is to me, that the manufacturer thinks that that piece of equipment is rugged enough and has enough thermal dissipation to handle being operated in bridged mode. Now, oftentimes there are some caveats about it saying that the amplifier can't drive quite as severe of a load as it could in stereo mode. So for example, the amplifier might be specced to drive a two ohm load stereo, but in bridge mode, they say maximum, or I should say a minimum of eight ohms or, or maybe four ohms because you're swinging more voltage, drawing more current, and that can, push the output stages closer to their limits. But the amplifier doesn't necessarily have to have a bridge switch in order to be bridged. All we need to do is to invert the polarity of the input signal coming in. And if you're dealing with a professional amplifier that uses Canon or XLR three pin connectors like this, it's pretty simple, really. All we need to do is to swap pins two and three in the connector. If you look inside the connector, which you're probably not going to see clearly on the video, but if you have one of these and you look inside of it, right near where the pins are, generally you'll find little numbers printed on the connector, numbered one, two, and three. Pin one is your ground. 
And pin two is your positive voltage swinging signal. And pin three is the exact same signal, except it swings negative rather than positive. So that pin two and three are the exact same signals, but one of them is inverted from the other. And so all you would have to do is on one channel of your amplifier, swap pins two and three so the signal gets inverted from its normal phase. And then you have a Y connector, which sends the normal straight pin two and three connections into the other channel. So one channel is swinging positive while the other channel is swinging negative. And there you have it, you've bridged the amplifier. The other thing we have to do in a bridged configuration is when we attach our loudspeaker, we attach it to the positive terminals of the amplifier and we don't attach it to the negative terminals. So let me draw this up real quick. Very likely on the back of your amplifier, you'll find speaker output terminals. which will look something like this. So we have one channel and we have the other channel and normally you hook the speakers to the negative and positive terminals for the each channel. But in a bridge configuration, we're going to be connecting them only to the positives because they're gonna be swinging against each other to provide us that larger voltage swing. And there is an assumption that these two negatives inside the amplifier are tied together to a common ground, which is necessary if the two sides of the amplifier are going to push against each other like a seesaw. Well, you've got to have a common point in the middle that ties all this stuff together that they can work against. There are some amplifier designs, uh, particularly in the car audio world, where you cannot connect the two grounds of the two amplifier sides together. And in those instances, you most likely cannot bridge those amplifiers. So one of the clues that I might check for to see if an amplifier is capable of running in bridged mode is to take an ohmmeter and check to see if there's solid continuity, like zero ohms, between the two ground outputs of the amplifiers. And in most amplifiers, most sound system amplifiers, they do share a common ground. These grounds are tied right together. Those two connectors are essentially electrically identical. And in that instance, you can most likely bridge the amplifier. But if the amplifier does not have common grounds, that's probably a clue that internally inside of the amplifier, they're doing some kind of bridge configuration already, and the grounds must be floating. Uh, check your operator's manual on your amplifier, there's usually some warning in there saying, do not connect the, the negative side of the two power amps together or the two amplifier sides together. And in that case, I would be very trepidatious about trying to do a bridge in that situation. So that's a real quick tip on bridging power amps. What, what happens when you hit the bridge switch? All it's doing is it's flipping the polarity of one of the inputs around. And if you're driving your amplifier with a balanced signal, like from a professional mixing board, then it's really easy just to swap pins two and three on one of your connectors, on the input connectors, and there you have it. If you're dealing with a hi-fi type amplifier that has an unbalanced connection, like an RCA pin connection where you have a shield and a center pin, well, that's a little more challenging to swap the polarity on because in that case, you probably need some amplifier module, like a little op amp that can actually swap the polarity on one channel. And that's exactly what's happening when you hit the bridge switch, is it's um, taking one channel straight into the amp, and the other channel is going through a amplifier module signal amplifier that inverts the signal. So while well, this one is going positive, this one will be going negative. And so that's all there is to bridging an amp. Now, having said all of this, 
my opinion is I tend not to like bridging power amplifiers because I think it drives the equipment really hard. It makes it more likely for you to hit thermal limitations and burn stuff up and break it. Uh, the amplifier also has a little lower damping factor, so it has slightly less firm control over your loudspeaker drivers. So when the speaker flies forward, you want the amplifier to have a, enough of a grip on that speaker that it can come to an immediate stop and then get pulled back and come to another immediate stop and go through its travel very controlled. That gives you tight, defined bass. If you stack two amplifiers on top of each other, well, you get only half of that control. And if you have a beefy, powerful amplifier, that may be no issue whatsoever. In addition, the amplifier is going to have a little bit of hum and noise and distortion, and those numbers get doubled in a bridged situation because you're running it through two amplifiers at once. Again, that's probably not a prime consideration. But the main thing for me is that it works your equipment really hard. It makes it run more hot. And in many cases, you don't really get that much of an appreciable gain out of the system. Now, yes, in theory, you get up to four times the power. In reality, usually you don't get that much. And it takes big change in output power for there to be a perceivable difference in real loudness from the system because our ears and brains are not linear. So if you're playing music at a certain level and you turn the volume up so you make it louder and you want it to be twice as loud as the current level is, well, you usually have to get somewhere around 10 times the power in order to get twice as loud. And by bridging the amplifier, we're only getting four times. So it's going to be an appreciable increase, but it's not going to really knock you back. So if you need to get a lot of level and you can't get there with your power amplifier and you're already pushing a fair amount of power, usually the answer is to look for speakers that are more efficient. But I know there's an interest in bridging power amps, and sometimes it does make sense. And so I thought that this would be a useful and interesting video for y'all. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, like I say, if you did, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. And I hope to see you on the next episode of Sound Advice. If you have comments or questions, don't hesitate to drop them down below. And I'll do my best to uh, get back and answer all of them that I can. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll catch you again soon. <laughs>